From the court, to the dugout, to the sideline. Remember, sport is designed to be fun for everyone. From the participants, to the supporters, and even the fanatics. So keep things positive. Be encouraging. Be supportive. Be a legend. This message brought to you by MediaWorks. Hockey Whited Upper, Netball Whited Upper, and Whited Upper Bush Rugby Union. Good morning and welcome to the Charles E. Persico Show brought to you by White Over Bush Live on Facebook. My name's Anton Persico and I'm joined here with Mark Childs. Good morning, Childs. You're looking pretty rosy in the cheeks there today. Well, I shouldn't be after the week of weather we've had. Yeah. The, the ice schools were out uh, that Tuesday training. Crikey, she was cold. I don't know if many teams would have trained on Tuesday. but Could have first have team did. Well, oh, you've got them going good there, mate, if you've, if yep. you've managed to score that. Yeah, I think they all got pneumonia and then that's why they didn't deliver the following week there. <laughs> Anyway, we uh, have to give a big thank you to Bevan uh, from the offering. He's um, we've been treated this morning. We have Bevan Morland and Jackie. Uh, Cheers, Jack's, great coffee, uh, great coffee there at the offering. And I, I there's a giveaway. There is a giveaway now. Um, for those that don't know, Bevan, a uh, very staunch um, Gladstone player. Well, yeah, he is. He is now and has been probably for the last ten or so years. Uh, but prior to that, he grew up in Featherston, Bevan yep. Morland, and uh, his father Charlie. My father moved coach the mighty Fetus and JB rugby team, unbeaten in four years, I might add. Uh, yep. Beat you Maris Midgets like, every time we played you. Uh, but Bevan then was quite famous in Greytown for the Greytown Cricket Club. Um, what, very, was his, what was his nickname? His name, his nickname was Psycho on the cricket field. <laughs> so uh, he had this white line fever, and when he crossed the white line, he changed persona completely. Coggy, you'll know a few people like that. Um, look, his kind of fame, though, Park Sports Ground number one, he used to kick off the concrete wall when he, when he was running into bowl. And unfortunately, by the time bowl we even got to the bowling crease, he'd run out of puff. So the old powder puff balls came down there. But okay, great, great guy. Bevan scored a few tries for the Gladstone Rugby Club. Now, if you can guess exactly how many tries Bevan scored in his career, you're going to win five uh, coffee vouchers at the offering. Now, I will give you a clue. He's very close to a big milestone in his try scoring career. So I'll leave it at that. Put your comments below. Five coffees at the offering if you can guess how many tries. Ten. Ten. Ten what? Ten tries. No, no, no. Be anyway, more than that. He loved the pick and go. Okay, the Greytown Festival of uh, Christmas kicked off last night with the uh, big switch or the lights went on, Charlesy. It did. I mean, it was amazing. Yeah. It was, no. It's great. So You're right uh, in amongst the Persco. Yeah, I you am. You're on the organising committee, aren't you? Oh, yeah, I am. So <laughs> get down there and have a look. God, it's, uh, right in Greytown. It's pretty special. Now, for those uh, gold card holders out there, so if you're over 65, I've actually got an event on tonight. So at the Great Town Orchards Lifestyle Retirement Village, uh, if you pop down between 3 and 6 p.m., have to be over 65, I've got uh, complimentary mulled wine and cheese platters and oh, Paul Christmas Pot gifts as well. So Paul Pottinger, are Paul, you listening? Paul Pottinger, he Grab qualifies. Super gold card. See? see you down here. Potsy there. at the Retirement Village at uh, 3 to 6 p.m. All right, Charles, are you going to give us an update on uh, the COVID-19? Oh, yeah. Level one. Crowds, get to the grounds. It's, we're back go, to normal. Awesome. Go and support your team. Brilliant. All right, that's yep. done. Fantastic. Now, this is pretty cool. Uh, White of Bush has released some merchandise, and Charlesy, you can purchase for $99 a hand-knitted White of Bush rugby jersey. Hand-knitted. Hand-knitted. Hand-knitted jersey. Yeah. That's amazing. We'll certainly be getting one of those. Oh, I'll bet you Mrs. Blue's probably... I've those. actually... <laughs> and and uh, with the What About You campaign, looking out for your mates, I've ordered one of these for me and Charlesy, so we should be wearing this. On the show so this week. is part of the 50th part of the Bush 50th celebration. They've got hats and also knitted jerseys as well. And I did hear if you're a past player, there will be jerseys available for past players who purchase with your playing number on it yep. as well. I, I have heard during the week, so that's pretty exciting for everyone. Yeah, it is. It is. Do you know your playing number? Or fan? No, I don't. No, I don't. Do, you? Yeah, but, do you? No, I forget. Well, he'd actually forget, forget people. You actually, not many people know this, but Anton did play for White Apple Bush back in the day, but he got sent home in disgrace, no, in disgrace from Gisborne no, for misbehaving. And it was, no, on, I didn't. Coggy, it was on the front page of the Times Age. I think Coggy wrote it. <laughs> disgraceful act and never to play for Bush again. <laughs> okay, the, the, the pick the score competition stays at uh, $1,500 plus now two coffees. I've got to throw from in as you, well. Yeah. Um, so no one got it last week and uh, no one was really that close either. No. All right, so we're going to tell you what game that is very shortly. And also, Charlesy, you can touch on the Lone Star Legend. Lone Star Legends. Well, we need more nominations down below, people, for the Lone Star Legend of the Week. We'll be giving that away next week. So just nominate someone that you know in a rugby club that is an absolute legend, does a power of work, one of those people behind the scenes. Yep. Get the nominations rolling. The reasons why, that'll be great. We'll give out another one next week. 
Okay, Facebook epic picks. Now, um, we should really change this to the Lewis Bush show because Lewis Bush has highlighted again here. This is a goose step that I've never seen a prop do a big goosey like this before. Well, Lewis thinks he's got hamstrings, so, yep. you know, he's, he's pulling these things out. Now, if you compare this to <laughs> David Campisi, if you go back, Lewis Bush has actually got another few more degrees on that foot there. So this is this is a bigger goosey than what Campo used to pull out. Don't tell him that, guy. We won't hear the end of it. All right, another one here from Bushy as well. It looks like, look at the hair, it looks like he's travelling about 120k into this, oh. into this tackle, so... Good pace Good on there, Bushy. There. Yeah, oh, it is Mark Charles trying to impersonate uh, Lewis Bush get off. one evening. Now, Charles, you explain this one. Well, yes, that's James Pacotti for Martinborough, the hooker. Um, I don't know, he's doing the old Usain Bolt impersonation there. Yeah. Um, he's not sure which way to go. Now, Caleb Rollins is reaching into the pocket now. James Pacotti, <laughs> two yellow cards in that game. He, and he <laughs> and then the referee says, that way, son. <laughs> <laughs> Should I go this way? Oh, I've got to go that way. Go that way. <laughs> Basically. All right. Now we're going to cross over to uh, or fresh back from suspension. Yeah, he's been Sinbin, but he's back now. He's, he's back now. Yeah, yeah. Our, our undercover, uh, spy, undercover agent. Undercover agent, uh, Chris Cogdale. Chris, how are you? Yeah, good morning, boys. How are you going? Very good. Yeah. Take, the, take it away, now, Coggy. Now, Coggy. Take it away. Coggy. What are you going to talk about? <laughs> secondary schools, eh? How about secondary schools? Um, yeah, start off. Okay. off you go, Coggy. Yeah, what up for college today? Big game, uh, 12 o'clock. Uh, they're up against Upper Hutt. Top two teams in the uh, Wellington Premier 2 division. Uh, Wycole coming off the back of a very good 39-10 win over 9 Eye. They'll find it pretty tough against Upper Hutt, who have been very, very good. Um, Raf Keel, no game this weekend. That's been postponed until the uh, 10th of July. Oh, sorry, they have got a game this weekend. Last week's game was postponed until the 10th of July, but they're away to St. John's Hamilton uh, this afternoon. So, yeah, pretty tough trip for them all the way up there. But uh, secondary schools, both teams, those two first 15s game pretty well. Yeah, there's some good, great talent on show there as well, Coggy, and amongst those teams. So we'll be looking uh, for a lot of those players to be linked up with clubs when they That's leave. Right. And, uh, yeah, some great talent on show there. All right, Coggy, we're going to come back to you shortly to cover the uh, uh, games from the round. However, the Dick Nunn Shield is up for grabs again this weekend. Piney have a second crack at it. Um, Carterton currently hold it. And we're going to introduce our uh, next guest to the show, the Fijian Flyer. Uh, welcome, Inia Katia. Yeah, good morning, guys. Hey, Inia. The human cannibal, Inia Katia. He's a danger all over the paddock. Doesn't matter what position he plays. Uh, certainly opposition coaches are, are very, very watchful of Inia. Um, and Inia, how long have you played um, senior rugby here now in the Wadarapa? Um, I think I started at Glaston Rugby Club since 2011. I think uh, I pretty much played for Glady for nine years. And nine years of nine years. So, so yeah, Inia, what, what, Inia, you moved to Carterton this year. What, um, what was the reason for the transfer? Nine years at Gladstone and now one year straight into Carterton? No, like, um, the reason I moved there, Stevie already knows, I already talked to them that one year I'm going to play for the family because um, both my mum-in-law's and my father-in-law's side play for Carson, the Brown family and the Led family. And Tony Brown always wanted me to go play for Glass for Carson. And every time we get drunk together, I always say, oh, yeah, next year, next year. Then the year come next year, and I was like, oh, sorry, Tony, I was drunk. Then, uh, yeah, then I decided this year to be my year. So he's pretty happy about that. But my father-in-law said that he had nothing to do with it. So it's all about Tony. <laughs> so, so, Tony, is that a few carver sessions you're having there with, with Tony? Yeah. Hey, is it carver you, you're on there? No, nah, just a beer with Tony. He hardly drink carver. <laughs> oh, Tony Brown, if you're listening, get a, you need a carver session. It's, it's, something, it's something else. Now, yeah. Inia, you're... Um, You've been playing different positions this year, I've noticed. Uh, you're a bit of a roamer. Uh, where do you see yourself um, coming down the business end of this competition? Where, where do you think you're going to be positioned? Uh, for the start of the year, um, they took him on the second five. Then um, for the last, for the, for the first round, I played second five. I really enjoy that. And, um, and they moved me a couple of weeks ago to the fullback. And uh, because of communication from the back and organizing from the back, and uh, and uh, Neil Rogers want me to go at the back, so I organized those two outside backs. So for the last two games, uh, I really enjoy at the back play fullback. But 
yeah, it's, so it's up to him, but I can play anywhere as long as I'm on the field. So that's all good. Yeah, and you're certainly a, a dangerous player and everyone's watching out for you. I mean, you played Gladstone last week. Uh, how did that go for the homecoming against your old side? Yeah, I was, I was looking forward for that, but a little bit nervous. But um, I was pretty happy when they uh, chucked me on the fullback. So at least stay away from those losses. Cause, you didn't have yeah, a right now chasing after you or Doc Cameron trying to get you, did you? Yeah, no, nah, right now pretty much everyone. So pretty happy at the back, stay away from them. Then uh, they kick a lot of the ball to me, but every time I catch it, I'm not, I'm not going to run it. So I just kick it back. So, yeah, so they've got no chance to catch me at this moment. <laughs> hey, see, not only a very good player, but a wise player. That <laughs> Mate, is that's so good. awesome. Any of stay on the lines. We want to talk to you about some results and games coming up this week, but it's always exciting to watch you play. Thanks for coming on, but stick around. Now, uh, Charlesy, let's get into some results from the senior reserve competition. Um, Pioneer had to default, so Pukatoi get 28 points. Yeah, the Great Town Popperwai Prowlers, 52-17 over Martinborough down there, yep. and that keeps uh, the Prowlers in the hunt for the top six. Out of Gladdy, Carterton, 36-3, resounding victory. Again, Carterton doing well this yep. season. Gladdy probably on the down a little bit now in the last couple okay, of weeks. Okay, a bit of drama here at this one. 44-5, uh, Marston Stars over Marist. Are we going to get into it? Well, look, the game's called off 20 minutes early. Uh, yeah, I mean, you, you probably would have heard around the scenes as to why. We're not going to go into it in great detail, yep. but probably something for those two teams to look at. Um, Tuhurangi, 26-7 over the coast. So, top of the table, Tuhurangi having an outstanding season and uh, very, very good side. All right, now let's have a look at the table here, Chodzi, because we have uh, Tuarangi, Carterton, Marston and Red Star, and Pukatoi out on four. Um, as you corrected me last week, it is a top six. It is a top six. So, yep. uh, look, we've got teams still in with a right rule chance of making that top six. So, a fantastic competition, the What About You Senior Reserve yep. competition. And, yeah, I can't wait for these playoffs. It's going to be um, some outstanding rugby. That's right. And then it's going to the games for this week. So, uh, East Coast, they host uh, Pioneer. Uh, it's out of Foriama at 1 p.m. Greytown, Pukatoi at Greytown. And uh, look, Martinborough really up against it against Masters and Stars here, Lee's Harley side. Um, that's at home in Martinborough, but um, you, you'd have to pick Stars here by a big score. You would. And Tuhurangi against Gladstone, Tuhurangi at home. You'd be taking Tuhurangi there. Now, yeah. Carterton versus Maris this game. Maris uh, were forced to default um, based on some incidents that happened. And last week's Maris game. been suspended for a week, uh, which yep. is unfortunate. Um, but yeah, Carterton take the five points there, twenty-eight nil for that match. Okay, let's get into uh, Carterton, who uh, take the Dick Nunn Shield of Gladstone, twenty-five to seven. Um, Inia, we're going to go back to you for a second. Tell us a little bit about um, how this game unfolded. On, is that on uh, Saturday last week against Gladstone? Saturday, that's it. Yeah. Um, yeah. Like, like a couple of the boys they play for. Um, for Carlton, they haven't, especially Daryl Pickering and Jack O'Hall, they haven't beat Gladstone since, for nine years since they start. And yeah, when I was playing for Gladstone, like Carlton haven't beat us over there when I was playing for Gladstone, but lots of those boys, they really proud that finally they beat Gladstone in the home field. And uh, especially like before the game, we talk about it, that it's gonna be a tough game against Gladstone. I always tell them like, They'll be pretty good for a start and later on in the last 20 minutes, but we we can't be like chill off. But we start well on the first half. We're putting up 18 points. Then um, starting on the second half, we put another five points. Let's take us to 23 points. Then um, for the last 60 minutes, last 20, uh, 20 minutes, then Gladstone just up to our fit. Then they score tries. Then um, for the last 20, they keep fighting, keep fighting, but our defense was pretty good, and um, they they only allowed to score one try. But, yeah, so that's the way it is. Well, yeah, any victory so at Gladstone... Get away from the win. Yeah, any, any, any victory at Gladstone is a great victory. They're an incredibly hard side to beat at home over the years. They've got a great yeah. record there. Uh, Coggy, you're at that game. Uh, could you give us your uh, take on it? No, I actually went to Pioneer versus uh, East Coast. Oh, sorry, Coast. Coggy, you weren't at that game. <laughs> All right, no, that's cool. We'll, we'll come back to that. We'll come back to you shortly in here on uh, this week's game. However, the next game up, Coggy, is um, East Coast 38, Pioneer 22. Do you yeah, Coggy, uh, Coggy, you're at that game. Could you give us a, your take on that one? 
Yeah, it was uh, actually a, a, an excellent game of rugby. And I'll tell you what, it's, 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 it's funny that more teams don't play on the turf because you do get that consistent uh, bounce and the nice firm ground to play on. Uh, yeah, uh, Pioneer, they, their discipline let them down in the last quarter. They did a couple of dumb things and they the referee was starting to maybe make a couple of calls they didn't agree with and they started bickering amongst themselves and East Coast took advantage. An excellent try by uh, Matt Perry, the flanker. He ran 40 metres from a quick throw and beat a couple of players and scored under the post. And then he set up the next try for a little kick through and he regathered it and passed it to the first five to score. So East Coast deserve it, winners. And the great thing about it is Coast, geez, they were weak. Um, Matt Perry was telling me during the week they were 11 regular players short, so with injury and so on. So uh, a great victory for the Coast. And uh, I think they're going to be one to watch out for in the next couple of weeks. Yeah, I agree, Coggy. They'll be buoyed by that performance. And Matt Perry, the Times Age Rugby Player of the Week. Uh, very good article. Once yep. again, Chris Cogdale, well done. Well done, Coggy. Okay, Ekatahuna get up over Maris 31-22. And uh, Greytown in some pretty terrible conditions. I guess it was pretty terrible everywhere, Charlesy, but it wasn't too nice and muddy. Um, yeah. 39-3. Yeah, that game, uh, there was a, a gale blowing there. It was actually yeah. not too much rain, but the wind really not. Knocked around both yep. sides a lot, and well, Manamara, Manamara were close at half time. Or what yeah, Greytown had the wind yeah. in the first half, five three at half time. When Greytown um, had the wind, and then Greytown turned around against the wind. Yeah, but sometimes that sort of makes you keep the ball on hand. Well, it does. You got to run the ball, mm. and uh, I think in the first half, Greytown Manamara came out and played really well, yeah. and and put Greytown off their game, and um, it was very very close, and and it was a bit stop start, a lot of penalties, um, but at half time there was a few words and. Yeah, great down, held on to the ball. Yep. And you're right, Anton, it is easier to hold the ball when you're yep. playing into the wind, and that's yep. that's pretty much what happened. That's right. Okay, now let's have a look at the table. I'm going to uh, I'm gonna get back uh, some of your feedback here, Coggy, because things are looking pretty congested from second through to about seventh position. Um, what are we expecting over the next couple of weeks, and what are your predictions? Okay, um, yeah, where do you start? Uh, first of all, I wouldn't be surprised if any of the – those uh, four got there, uh, or any of those seven got into the four, I should say. But you got to look at it, and I think, well, Greydown are certainly assured, aren't they? They're going to get a home semi final. They're going to be top qualifiers. Uh, then you've got to, I, I just think the toughest road to hoe is probably um, Marist, and because uh, they've got to go out to Foriyama, and then they've got Carterton at home. I think Carterton have got quite a good run in. So I'm picking them to finish up in second place. I like the way they're playing, uh, and they, and I like the way they're prepared to spin the ball, even in the tricky conditions. Um, Maris, the problem. Ekerahuna and Gladstone, I think it's going to come down to a toss of a coin between those two teams who go through, and it's Gladie at home to Eki in the last round, and I think it's going to be the battle of uh, last man standing because uh, they're both wrecked with injury, and they've got a lot of work to do to get uh, anywhere near full-strength sides back on the paddock. Yeah, good point, Coggy. My view is that it will come down to luck with injuries with a lot of these teams and who they can actually put on the field and especially who they've got on the bench to come on. Um, I think the bench mm. players in the second half are, you know, can make a huge difference to a game. So uh, a lot of it will come down to luck with injuries, but what a congestion you've got there. Yeah, yeah. You've got you know, Martin Burrow are out of it now, but you've got um, those six teams um, buying for four spots, sorry, three spots, um, great down assured of a semi-final spot. So some exciting rugby to be had over the next two weeks. So Supporters, you're watching, get to the grounds. It's going to be fantastic. Okay, games for this weekend. It's the Dick Nunn Shield, Carterton, host uh, Pioneer. Inia, do you have any message uh, for your players or the Pioneer team heading into this week? Heading into today, actually. Oh, yeah. Um, hopefully, the weather will be pretty good. But um, because we, we we got a couple of injuries too, and uh, we talk about this week to work on a rock situation. Because last week, the Glaston got lots of turnover. So we've been doing lots of training on um on our rock stuff on Tuesday, and hopefully the forwards do better on their line out and and the scrum. Then uh, probably then we got a um, show on the back line because at the moment we got a pretty pretty good outside backs and the fastest too. So me and the full back is the old fellow from the back just controlling the two young fellows from the outside. So yeah, so hope, looking forward for the game, but it's not going to be tough because Panya is on the top two too. And we're going to be fighting for the top four too. So for the last two games, now we, we're thinking of maybe a bonus point or even a win would be good for us too. Yeah, great comments in here. I think if you can get some parity up front, get some dominance here, I think your back line 
will be too good for Pioneer. Sorry, Pioneer, but the Scarlet team are dangerous. And if, Pioneer, well, if Car doesn't get a chance on the in the final on the turf, I think the turf will really suit I, them as well. I, so, I think yeah. if any side is going to knock over Greytown this year, it's going to be Carlton. And I think they're timing their run really well for the season. So I've got um, a massive upset here. I think Carlton are going to go through. An upset, well, in this game? In the whole competition. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah, yeah. That's what I reckon well, going to happen, Charlie. Yeah. So yeah. Good anyway, on you, uh, next game up, Ekinahuna hosts Martin Borough. Um, Martin Borough really just playing for pride here. But Ekinahuna, a lot on the line again. Well, Coggy, what do you reckon this game here, Coggy? Ekinahuna, Martin Borough, Ekinahuna at home. Uh, well, talking to Craig Pepperell, he said there's mud and mud and more mud up there. And he said he's never seen oh, the field quite so bad. So I just don't know what it's going to be like up there. Um, Martin Borough, look, they will be willing in that, but I think they're pretty weak in the forwards, and I think Ekerahuna will be too good for them there. I just don't think Martin Borough will get enough ball to be a threat. And I can just see a low scoring game. I can see something like, uh, say, a, a 10 3 or a 10 6, and it'll be pretty hard work in that mud up there. Yeah, the, the Martin Borough forwards, though, last week, they came to play against Greytown. They, they showed a lot of ticker and a lot of good body position. and. Yeah, I think if they can ruffle Ikerahuna a little bit, this could be closer than we think, this game. Yeah, the scrums weren't too bad, Charles. There was one scrum at the start where, where Greytown dominated, but then Marty really sort of started coming back into it, right? Yeah, well, the scrums have been shambles all year. But Who you got? You got Marty for this one? No, I'll take Ikerahuna at home. <laughs> yeah, take, I know you'll take Marty. <laughs> I'll yeah. take Marty. Always yeah. go, Marty. Come on, Brucey. All right, Greytown at home to Gladstone, 235 at Greytown. Um, Charles, he's obviously got Greytown on this. How are you guys going injury-wise? I think you're starting to get your strength back. Yeah, we, have, uh, we had 25 to choose from this week, so three missed out. So that's uh, starting to come right for Greytown. Uh, another trophy on the line here, the Rex Plow Memorial against Gladstone, who are a big threat at the breakdown. Uh, that's something we've been focusing on this week. So, I believe yeah, Gladstone have got some injury worries at the moment too, though. We do believe so, yeah. They'll, yep. they'll be going through their own, their own little patch of injury. So every club team has had this this season. It's just that's what I say. It comes down to a bit of luck. And timing with these injuries. Yep. Oh, I've got Gladstone to beat uh, upset well, Greytown here would. as well. Now, I did remember last week that um, all the away teams won. All the away teams won last week. So, yeah, home ground advantage meant nothing last week with no crowds. Yeah. So uh, bring the crowds back and get behind your home teams. That's it. I'll and uh, East Coast versus Marist um, out there at Forey Armour at 235. I've got Marist here to bounce back and um, start their run home. Well, I'll tell you what, the Coasties, they're on the up and they showed a lot of ticker last week. They'll have more players available this week at home. I'm taking East Coast. All right, no, I've got Marist. Coggy, well. what about that game? From you've seen these two teams a bit this season. East Coast, Marist. Uh, East Coast, the way they played last week, uh, they just never give up, and they're not very big, but they're just incredibly physical, and they they just give 120 percent all the time. And I just think um, Marist have just got that little bit of um, they succumb to pressure. That's a nice way to put it, isn't it? Isn't it? So I think uh, East Coast will get stuck into them, and they'll really ruffle them and. It depends on if Peter Beach is playing. I don't know if he's played the last couple of weeks, has he? So if he's yeah, back, Beach, he's Beachy. Beachy is available and he did play last week as well and he is definitely available today. Yeah, he's the key to Marist for me, but um, I just think uh, East Coast at home and they've got some loyal supporters out there and they want to reward them for the their final home game of the season. All right, Coggy. Now, based on these games uh, today, what one would you pick to be the match of the round? Oh, I reckon Carterton Pioneer. There you go. It's, it's two versus three, isn't it? So, uh, yeah, Carterton Pioneer. Well, sorry, Coggy. The match of the round is Greytown Gladstone. One that has picked the it's score. one versus three, isn't it? One versus three. Something like that, yeah. But Something that's, that's like that. picked the score. Okay, yep. Charles, he's overridden you. I gave you an opportunity there, Coggy, but you're straight back from suspension, so you don't get any privileges. So the match of the round is Greytown Gladstone. versus Gladstone. Uh, $1,500 and two coffees on the line. You know the rules. Put your score below. First score in collects the money. Uh, have to have winning team and exact score. Hopefully someone can win it this year, Chelsea. Well, yeah, the sun's out too, so you know it should be reasonably good yep. for running. I mean, the grounds will be puggy. beautiful rugby. But the grounds bit. will be puggy, but you know yep. it's uh, it's going to be some running rugby. Yep, it'll be a little bit sticky underfoot, but I think it's going to be um, all in all a good day. Now, the what about you campaign? Watch out for your mates. It is dry July, Chelsea. Will you be participating in dry July? No, I won't be participating in dry won't? July. Will you be participating in Dry July? No, I can't because I'm, I'm putting on some functions this month. Right, so. yeah, yeah. Look, it's all about looking after your mates and watching what you're drinking. Look, if you're doing Dry July, hats off to you. That's a, yeah. a, a well, if, you, if you're used to having a tipple on a weekend, well, good on you. It's a great cause, Dry July. But no, I won't be doing Dry July. Okay, but the What About You campaign is about looking after your mates and it's a responsible drinking of alcohol. So um, make sure you support your mates and drink responsibly. Absolutely.
great messages. All right, cool. Now, hey, thanks for watching the show. Thank you so much, Enia, uh, for coming on the show. And Coggy, we might have you back next week too. You put in a good performance today. Now, um, Enia, Enia, just before we go, can you give us a little Fijian song before you leave? <laughs> oh, bro. Sorry, I can't sing. I'm, yes, so you I'm can. I've heard you. Song, mate. Give us a song. Come on. Uh, I can't remember any song. <laughs> <laughs> well, right, Enia, you have a, you have an epic game. It's all, like I said, it's always exciting watching you play. Uh, thanks for coming on. Thanks, Coggy. See you guys next week. Yes, thank you.